Hi, everyone. Hope you're well. So I am going to give you some pointers on like how to um, uh, use this app. And I hope that will be uh, helpful to everyone. So, um, uh, right. So I have some people watching the webinar on uh, Instagram as well. But you guys, only you guys will have access. So, right. Let's get started so if you where is it attendees dashboard here right 12 here we have we're still waiting for another eight right so you will be able to see um on your can, can everybody hear me if you can can you see the little hand symbol yeah, there you go. Good. If you can all put your hands up. Awesome. Can you all hear me? Good. Andrea, can you hear me? Kate. Tracy. So put your hands. Click on the little hand icon just so I can, so I know you're, yeah, good, Paula. Yeah, perfect. So I know you can see it good. Right. So if you what well, if you already have any questions, um there's a little question mark symbol. If you click on that, you'll be able to type questions and I'll see them. When we get to the um, when we get to the last part of this uh, webinar, I will be answering the questions, okay? Right, so we have, we're still waiting for another eight. Hello, Victoria. Can you hear me, Nick? If you can hear me, put click on the hand icon so that I know. Good, Kate. Hey, Nick. Nital, good. Hey, guys. Right, awesome. I am going to see if I can share my screen with you now. Right. Okay, guys, can you see my screen now? Can you please, if you can, when you see the question mark, just type yes so that I can see, so that I know. Can, can you all see my screen? Type yes. Good. Yes. <laughs> Good. Good. Hey, Marianne. Good. Awesome, guys. No? I know you can't see my screen. Hmm. Give it another minute or so, minute or so. No, just me. Right. I'm gonna unclick and click again. Let's see if that works now. All right. You can see me. Some of you can't see. So there, I think there's two of you that can't see the screen. I mean, guys, worst comes to us, like, it seems like there's only two that can't see the screen. Uh, I will, hey, Tracy. Uh, Lala, the link to the webinar, I sent it to you by message in that group, but I also posted it on. So if you go to the last post on my main feed, at the bottom, you see the link to the webinar, okay? Uh, we need to slide to it we need to slide to it hmm right guys i'm gonna get started okay let me see if i can make this a little bit smaller good all right perfect so cool um right about well, the immune system and coronavirus and that it's not 
you know, the virus isn't killing us. It's co- like our immune systems are killing us. Our immune systems are, le- are letting us down. And there's a, um, there's a level of truth to that. Um, most diseases are, are, chron- are caused by chronic inflammation. And inflammation, like short on a short term, inflammation is a good thing. It alerts us to, like, it, it sends a signal saying that, that there's a problem. So it's it's an alert. It helps us so that we can deal with it and we can protect ourselves. Now, when it comes to long-term inflammation, that's where problems start to happen. Um, most diseases are, more, and especially most chronic diseases that I'm talking you know, about arthritis, depression, anxiety, HHD, uh, and like uh, autoimmune diseases, all of those are caused by, um, so Kate, I'm, I'll send you the, the, the presentation later, okay? So just watch it here then. Uh, so most, um, are called, most of these diseases are caused by long-term chronic inflammation. Now, when we start talking about immunity, and this is the, the one thing that I don't think it's being said, enough or explained enough if you go on google and you type uh, what is the immune system it will give you such a generic and unhelpful um explanation it says you know organs and processes in the body that help you provide uh resistance to infection and toxins okay great so what am i going to do with that what do i do with that information and even more so is that accurate um 70 so research we now know and that's from like sound research that 70% of our immune system is actually found in the lining of the gut. The lining, and that's what we call the, the microbiome. I don't know if you've heard, if anyone has heard, can you please type yes if you've heard of the microbiome or if you've know if you know what it's all about. Oh good, Kate. No, no, no. Okay, right, guys. So the micro, so the microbiome is pretty much where all the live bacteria lives in our gut. Okay, it's we as human beings, we have our own ecosystem. Um, the microbiome, like, has about like anywhere between two million and twenty million genes, and when it comes to gene expression. Us as human beings, we have about 20,000 genes. So at best, we are 1% human. And I know this is a very weird concept to grasp, but um, we pretty much started. We, if, you, if you think back, like in terms of evolution, it all started with the microbiome. It all started with bacteria. And it's when we eat, the first thing that meets that food is our microbiome and how it reacts to that food and how it reacts to the all these interferences that we we bring from the external environment um is it's either either as a toxin or as a nutrient so what we put in our system what we put in our bodies will dictate how our health um how, how we behave how our health uh, is and how I, how strong our immune systems are. Now, the interesting thing about the bacteria or in in our gut lining or about the bacteria in the micro uh, microbiome is that it actually sends through the neurotransmitters. It sends signals to our brain, so it contrain it controls brain function. It controls. Um, Hormone release, for those that work with me, you know I'm really big on hormone like manipulation through nutrition and through exercise. And this is something that I've said for years and now it's gotten a little bit more, um, you know, people, people are talking a little bit more about it. It's got this gain a bit more popularity. But I've like, I've talked about how important it is to, like that we are our hormones and our hormones are controlled by our brain and guess what the bacteria in our gut our microbiome is also responsible for that um actually there's um there's a study that's show, showing i think that's 
80% of our serotonin. So serotonin is that hormone that makes us feel happy. And, you know, uh, especially after we either exercise or after we eat uh, chocolate, uh, 80% is actually released from the gut. So I, it's almost like they let the brain think that it, they're, it, the brain think it's in control, but really it all starts in the gut. So basically what we, what, what happens when once we eat, our microbiome releases these like small molecules called them like uh, metabolites. And after we digest food, these small molecules are absorbed by our blood. Okay. And they start to control the gene expression and they can now change what happens in the in the body including our immune system brain chemistry and all of that so and the interesting thing is that this will all be dictated by the quality of the food we eat um i've like I've said that before in some in another controversial post and I got bombarded with mass like private messages on Instagram when I said it's not about the calories. And I am a firm believer that it's not about the calories. It's about the quality of the foods that we put in our bodies. If you have a small understanding of uh, endocrinology, so the study of hormones, you will know how important it is to control. And I also believe in diversity, in that like when it comes to um, the variety that we of the foods that we consume. But we have to be realistic. I I don't believe anyone can ever completely stop eating dairy or stop eating gluten or stop eating certain things that can say that we can say are detrim detrimental to our health um and therefore removing the, the these elements completely from our diet will, is the thing that is actually gonna um encourage our bodies to develop food sensitivities but this is a subject for a little bit later on we're going to talk about food sensitivities if you want to talk about that as well um so one thing that a lot of people have asked me, especially in the last couple of days, is like, okay, so what can I do to improve our immune system, to improve my immune system? The media is telling you, eat healthily and exercise. Is that it? Is that all? Um, no, it's not. And, and that's another thing that I've said before. By the time the foods Hi, Alicia. Uh, by the time foods arrive at the supermarket shelves, they, on average, it's already about five days old. So you won't get as many nutrients as you would be getting if you're getting straight from the crops. That's a fact. So don't be naive to think that you don't need to supplement your um, your diet with uh, with extra right supplementation or like concentrated supplementation because the quality of the foods no matter the origin if you're getting them from farm shops mm, not as bad or uh, if you're getting organic obviously even better but um you're still not gonna be you won't be getting everything that you need okay um right right so when I prepared the the other the prevention guide that was about two weeks ago, I sent it to as many people. I distributed it around. Um, I've cr I created that little um, kind of like not a Venn diagram, but kind of that diagram showing how one thing links onto the other. And to me, it all starts with nutrition. If you know what to eat uh, and the quality of the and the sources of the foods that you eat you are like way ahead of the curve um supplementation super important i will be uh giving you my personal take on what is the key supplementation for you to implement uh habits right super important and that includes exercising mindset um energy is big whether you believe it or not you you have felt and your, how you feel is all is always a good indication right like in terms of stress anxiety so that affects how we absorb food 
they, you know, how we digest and absorb the new, digest the foods and absorb the nutrients. Um, and we're going to be talking a little bit about that as well. Uh, not too much because not, that's not the focus of this presentation. Um, right. So start from the point that food is information. Okay. It, depending on the quality and the source of that food, you can be um, consuming toxic information or healing information. It really is in our hands. Um, the foods we eat, every single food that we eat inter like interacts with our immune system. Our immune system is the first kind of like point of our gut lining where 70% of our immune system is located is the first point of contact, right, with the foods that we eat. Um, and and they will dictate like how, like what happens from what, once that's digest, digested. As I said before, our bodies thrive on variety. I've said that even like almost 10 years ago, and I used to uh, prepare athletes for competitions, and I've always been very against keeping people on, you know, and even like non-athletes, they used to come, like clients used to come to me and, oh yeah, I've been eating brown rice or sweet potato and chicken and broccoli. It's like, okay, for how long? And for my clients, they probably... Um, uh, no, Dan. If you if you if you've got a question, uh, type on the question mark. No, we can't hear you. <laughs> Don't worry. Um, so, and we do thrive on variety, and I think it's such a big mistake to uh, narrow our consumption down to one or two food groups. Like we need to have a wide spectrum of nutrients from different sources. We want our microbiome to be as diverse as possible. And you've probably heard um, that when you say, if you have a pathogen or if you um, take like antibiotics, that it kills the, it kills our good bacteria, right? Well, it kills some of our bacteria, but if you have a diverse um, bacteria flora, like a ba diverse bacterial ecosystem in your in your gut lining then you won't kill all of it and then you can start supplementing with the right stuff so to make sure that anything is always replenished and recovered um so this little diagram again i prepared that one um i'm just gonna bring it up here because uh, my skin my my screen here i can't see the whole thing Da, da, da. Oh, neither on this one. Let me just move this around. Right. So now these are my personal choices, okay, of um of things that you can eat and things that you can do. And I am gonna be uh, explaining why I've chosen some of these things. Uh in terms of nutrition, like if you split between obviously um vegetables and um, fats and animal protein um, plant-based I'm not I am not a vegetarian I'm not ve a vegan I think that there are ways veganism in the western world hasn't really worked because a lot of people end up falling for the um, the you know the soya trap Trying to find alternatives that, you know, meet alternatives. And that's not what veganism is all about, really. Um, so, talking about vegetables and fruit, always, again, always try and choose um, your uh, organic vegetables and for, from like, you know, farm, like fair trade. Always focus on the quality of those um, of those elements, like of those foods. Uh, no additives, like no hormones, antibiotics, uh, pesticides, or like glyphosate. You wouldn't like intuitively uh, choose to have any of that. And as a general rule, rule again, that I've like I've co with that I've said to a lot of the people I've coached is, if you have 
Okay, cool. If you have, um, if you read the label and get in the habit of reading the labels, okay, if there's anything there that you can't pronounce or that you don't know um, what it means, you probably shouldn't be having it, okay? And that is a good, um, to me personally, it's a good like um, tongue and cheek uh, way to know what to eat and what not to eat. Um, foods that are like highly anti-inflammatory, like turmeric, parsley, garlic, ginger, cloves, all of that parsley is actually also, um, it has like some antibiotic uh, properties without hurting your stomach lining. So that's really good. Uh, vegetables. Now with the vegetables, try and choose non-starchy vegetables. Uh, all, I always lean towards like the dark leafy green vegetables. If you want to have nightshades and I would, like nightshade vegetables are the ones um, like tom uh, tomatoes, um, eggplants and peppers, like the skin of those um, those vegetables, they actually have a lot of lectin, which is very toxic. Same for beans. And that's why whenever I have clients that want to eat beans, I'm very specific in how they have to prepare beans. Five beans, five raw beans can kill a human being in a matter of hours. So it's very high in lectin. So make sure that you let it soak for at least 12 hours okay before you consume and definitely avoid having like canned beans and that kind of thing um there's a reason why we get flatulence you know like it's our bodies don't really like it so they're a way to say like mm, this is not really good for me uh so yeah and and as i said the, the oh and with nuts as well that's a big one uh soak your nuts that will get rid of all the lectin um but nuts and seeds they're such a great way and there's such a nutrient dense easy economic way to pump the, you know, the nutri your nutrition up so i would never say tell, tell my clients don't have it but um just be aware of like how to prepare it walnuts are fine and pistachios are fine as well um now with animal protein organic responsibly sourced when it comes to um like chicken grass fed and oh yeah. <laughs> when it comes to uh yeah you try to use like free range organic where you can grass fed um same same with eggs organic free range mm -hmm. uh beef now they have like what they call regenerative uh, farming where they like the farmers found ways to kind of like respect and replenish the ecosystem. It's really interesting. There's lots of like really cool articles on how uh, they're doing that. It's harder to find, but you can. Uh, but if not, at least choose, at least try and choose organic, fair trade where you can. Now with fish, the smaller, the go for smaller fish, um, like tuna swordfish like none of that uh -uh. because they, obviously we do have um concerns when it comes to high level of mercury and they are very toxic to human beings and so yeah cold water smaller fish like the small fish they call they eat the algae so it they eat which tends to uh, filter right filter all the butane and all the mercury in the in the ocean so you're safer with that um like salmon trout and sardines um right then we have uh, with fruit absolutely um the, the cool thing about fruit and I've, again i've said that to my clients before and I, I i've heard someone talking about um dark dark food like dark uh fruits and vegetables recently on a podcast and i was like oh my god i've been talking about this for years um the darker the skin, the higher levels of antioxidants. So if you think of like, if you see color in nature, 
that means it's it's got really high uh, contents of antioxidants or of polyphenols and these are all the things that are going to help us like kind of filter and sieve through all the the, the nasties so yeah so blueberries blackberries um like any berries in general but like dark, the dark remember this the darker the skin the higher uh antioxidants and polyphenols content um i've had also people asking me about um coffee i love my coffee actually coffee okay coffee red grapes and chocolate it's got high levels of polyphenols so with the chocolate the only thing that i would say which is what i do i have 85 percent 90 or 100 percent uh cocoa so you, i'm not telling anyone here to go and have a Snickers bar, but to add a little bit of like dark chocolate, why not? And if you're my client, you see that a lot of my, a lot of the plants, you, you guys have like 85% chocolate here and there. Um, so it's just knowing, balancing it out and knowing how to play with nutrition. Um, I Guys, I can see lots of questions. I will answer them at the end, okay? Let me just... Cool, cool. We still have time. Right. So, oops, hold on. Okay. And obviously, the one that's quite intuitive is uh, water. Super important. We will help you, help you flush out toxins. We are like our cells are made of like eight, 75 to 80% uh, water. And I would definitely say if you're not drinking, you know, two to three liters of water a day, you need to rethink your priorities. Um, in terms of supplementation, vitamin D3, probiotics, and omegas. These three are like, when it comes to immune system, these three are definitely the go-to probiotics because of as we've been talking about the immune system and your gut lining it will help you replenish you help you detoxify it 100 percent like i tend to have two probiotics a day um and even like things like eczema a lot of you you've probably noticed like your hands becoming irritated with all the cleaning products um without all the um, the chemicals from the gels and my hands like my clients saw it right look how it is now my hands were so inflamed they were red itchy they were actually painful my skin was breaking and and then i was like okay hang on a minute and i've upped my dosage of probiotics gone i'm not joking um d3 now d3 you know that we produce that we metabolize that like through exposure to sunlight now the interesting thing obviously for you the folks here in the uk i know there are some people in australia and new zealand that are watching this um but the thing is we for us here in the uk we would only really uh get enough mm, vitamin d uh vitamin d3 during spring and summer so because the uv index has to be greater than three and that's when it happens it's like spring like the hotter days in spring and summer so we do have to supplement with vitamin d3 and obviously because of other concerns in terms of like skin cancer and other uh, harmful effects of sun exposure uh most of us we're always covered up and we have like um sunscreen and so vitamin d3 make sure that you add that one now with the fish oils okay just a little tip for women um women so we need for, for, for the women that are on contraceptive pills or anyone taking any estrogen inhibitor um we need our own estrogen to metabolize um the omega so to metabolize the plant-based um omegas into the epa and dha which is what we need okay 
Now, if you are on any sort of uh, estrogen inhibitor or if you are uh, taking the pill, contraceptive pills, you won't have that. So if, if you're a vegetarian and even if you're a vegan, I would say, and you're taking contraceptive pills or estrogen inhibitors, you perhaps need to start considering switching to uh, fish oils, okay? Because you won't be able to do that conversion. Um, and obviously vitamin C, uh, to, that we all know it helps support the immune system. And when, when it comes to like recommendation for like the dosage, it's very like, it, it, it's it, it's it varies like case by case i would i'm more than happy to have a chat with each of you after this so if you um what i'm gonna ask if you want to have if you want me to, to do a little a 30 minute chat with you and review what you're eating what you're doing what you're drinking after this um after this uh, webinar can you just type in that box or even there on um, on Instagram? Can you type yes? And then I will pick up with you and we can arrange for a time so that I can give you some advice on that. Um, and then habit sleep. I can't uh, stress enough the um, importance of sleep. This is when we repair, recover. That's when we heal. Um, growth hormone which is the hormone that helps us repair tissue and uh melatonin gets released in the deeper cycles of sleep so sometimes it's not just how many hours we sleep but the quality of those hours um so if you're not sleeping well and deeply and feeling fresh then maybe you need to start uh considering what how can i supplement to help my sleep and there are different ways to do it you can do that with melatonin you can do that with zma you can do that with cbd oil and you can do that with like meditation guided meditation there are different ways that you can tackle that but sleep is super important another thing that i do with my clients and they hate it at the beginning but i think the ones that have tried they've gotten used to it now which is a technology curfew so 30 minutes after uh so 30 30 minutes to an hour before they go to bed they are not allowed to be on their phones or to be on their laptops or even watch tv guys if you have a tv in your bedroom shut it off no more that's so bad we have a blue light and blue light actually stops the production our, our uh, ability to produce melatonin during your sleep so for every so before bedtime don't forget this one for every 30 minutes that you uh, get exposed sorry for every hour that you get exposed to blue light your production of melatonin get stops for 30 minutes so let's say if you watch tv for like three hours um before bedtime you will be missing out on an hour and a half worth of production of melatonin production now you might be thinking well but i do get like six seven eight hours sleep uh right but you're not in the sleep cycle that you need to be to be releasing melatonin throughout the whole seven hours hmm. so yeah that's the catch right um so yeah so if you can do something for me and for you now but between um, 30 minutes to an hour before bedtime and at least 30 minutes after you get up, don't check your phones. Don't check your phones. Phones off. Okay. I leave my phone charging. So this is my work phone. You're watching me on my personal phone. I use the my alarm clock on my personal phone, but that stays on uh, airplane mode. And my, and my work phone, it's actually completely off until about an hour to an hour and a half after i wake up and i don't check social media i don't do any of that and my clients know sometimes they try and contact me right in the morning i don't reply until about nine sometimes 10 a.m um it's not for me to be mean i don't mean to be mean to them but it's to protect my brain and everything is connected right like that what we do to our with, with our food with our nutrition um that gets interpreted like that gets received in the in, in our gut lining 
gets transmitted to our brain through our neurotransmitters. And that gets obviously translated into information and to um, regulation of hormones, uh, even like our craving hormones or the foods that we are attracted to, uh, our hum hunger hormones, like it's not really your fault. It's, it's your gut uh, controlling your brain, believe it or not. Right. So let's not get sidetracked. I get really excited. I try to talk about, I always want to talk about everything. Uh, and another one with a habit. So meditate, meditation, massively important. Um, I've actually recorded a couple of like guided meditations for my clients. Um, a, you know, a lot of people are like, how can I meditate? Like I started meditating, like the first time I started meditating, guys, I swear to God, I was, um, uh, there was this place in Covent Garden uh, called Inner Space. And they used to do a lot of uh, meditation courses, meditation, like guided meditation. And I remember sitting down on, on like on the on a little cushion and they had a carpet. And I all I can think of for the first like I think 30 minutes, the meditation probably was probably like 40, 45 minutes, was carpets. And I started looking at the carpets and then I looked at the threading and it wasn't even. And I was like, who made this carpet and where did this carpet came from? But like, oh my God, I had a massive trip on carpet production. And that was my first experience as well with meditation, believe it or not. So it's not about fighting thoughts. It's about, okay, I'm starting to, okay, I've started to meditate. I'm focusing on my breathing and kids homework and annoying husband and okay acknowledge and let it go it's all about um don't fight it thoughts will come and it will get to a point that they they will get become less and less and less but there's um really good uh resource on youtube that i use a lot and that's called uh douchy douchy meditation so it's d-a-u C-H-S-Y, and they have the best guided meditation uh, audio. So what I do, I put that on sometimes because they have like sleep meditations as well. Put that on, turn it down, and like so that the blue light doesn't affect my sleep. And with my earphones on, and I just do that until I drift into um, into like a peaceful sleep. Super cool. Um, and exercise and stay active. Like I know that a lot of people are struggling now because they don't have access to gyms and it's not, it's sometimes like, oh, it's not that much fun to do the same workouts every day. I get it, but we are all in this, like we are in this together. We are all in the same boat. So we just need to, this is the time not to get complacent. This is the time to get creative. Okay. Um, and look, do the things now. Like I have, I don't know if you guys can see the little I have a little um, list and I've, I have one in my bedroom and I have one in my in my living room with like my little routine of things I want to do this is the time for you to tackle all those projects and I know you have them we all do that we used to find excuses for not doing right like whether it's to build your website whether it is to um you know write your write a book or like a script whatever it is do that now because we don't know there's nothing telling us now apart from our knowledge of what our present is and what our past has been there's nothing that tell, that tells us now that we don't have an incredible few days ahead and, and weeks ahead of us prepare for the worst but expect the best this is my motto and this is how i've been living because three if you think about it three weeks ago we weren't even thinking about or talking about um, coronavirus, right? Like we weren't talking about it, not or at least not to the, to the scale that we are talking now. That we're like we're not. It was it was a non-issue. So we don't know that they're not going to come up with like any like with a vaccination in the next two to three days or weeks. So. Get, get, prepare for the worst expect the best um so that's mindset and as to the gratitude when it comes to mindset as to the gratitude that is so big right like i sometimes send messages to my clients like okay just give me three things you're grateful grateful for how often we forget to um just show appreciation 
and also acknowledge people for the good that they do acknowledge people for the things they you know for the impact they have in you in your life this is the time to do that now um and forgiveness forgiveness is such a big one if we don't forgive people if we don't forgive ourselves we will hold a grudge for a long long time there's there's um uh hawaiian meditation practice called hoponopono some of you might have heard about it hoponopono basically says i love you i'm sorry please forgive me and it's all about like you know and, and thank you so it, it's literally just four words and you can remember those four words if you think if you just focus on that for about three minutes every day i'm sorry i love you thank you please forgive me and to the world to the people that you know that you they they if you need to say that to but also to yourself you see like oh it makes such a massive difference so i hope that that was a little bit helpful um and let's go to the next one. Oh, oh cool and i think that is it i'm just gonna try and see if there's anything else i wanted to uh touch on um Guys, I'm gonna open the questions now because I can see that there's some here. Ah, oh, thanks, Paula. <laughs> Loving it. Good. Hold on, hold on. Okay, guys, I'm gonna start going through the questions. If you have any questions, you can send me on. Um, variety of food what can you do like if you have a specific go in mind like fat loss for example um well more about quality sorry hold on hold on hold on okay let's have a look um, Okay, right. I'm just going to start going through the questions now. I've got that in order. Okay. When is best to take those supplements? Which part of the day? Blue light blockers. Okay, good. Uh, that's awesome, Kate. So, um, right best time to take supplements again that will depend on what you eat and how you eat so that is the trick like i've had clients they used to take like cla uh conjugated linoleic acid um when they were trying to like obviously lose fat and then they were taking that when like together with their omegas or with their flexes or even like with a salmon meal um cla is a fat blocker but if it blocks all the fat so what they were doing really was just wasting money because it was they were blocking the good fats that you actually need your body to absorb. So it really depends. Okay, I'm, I might need to take that with take that up with you after the um, after the webinar um, because it's very it depends on how and how you're eating what you're eating. I so with the um, so vitamin D. I usually, so I either take them in the morning. So usually during summer, I supplement with 2000 IUs. In the, in the winter, I do 4000 IUs. I wouldn't recommend anyone going too high unless you have a vitamin D3 deficiency. Um, but in which case, if you are having to supplement with like, say in some cases, and I've seen that even like Solgar, they sell 10,000 IU capsules um i would say maybe consider supplementing with k2 which will help you uh absorb the d3 but also it stops it from over toxifying your um your liver so be careful with that like everything remember what i always say it's about balance everything's about balance so don't go too crazy and start taking like five multivitamin tablets and that kind of thing um the probiotics i personally take quite, like this is a like it's a high it's a high strength 
probiotic. Uh, I had a better one, the ones that you actually had to leave it in the, in the fridge before, but I couldn't find them. They were all uh, sold out. Um, I like splitting my um, supplements like twice a day. And obviously with the probiotics, I have them with me with meals. Another way to kind of like give your um, your gut a little boost is to use grain powder. So you mix that with water in the morning down at like just like 100 ml of water is enough. You don't need to do that too long, like twice to two to three times a week is plenty. Um, make sure that you're getting all the fibers and that your digestion is working well, uh, which part of the day. Now, yeah, it depends. Like, for instance, if you supplement, which I do with meat complex, meat complex helps with um, nutrient, nutrient absorption. Uh, the best for me and for what I've seen with like my, how my clients responded is to go halfway through the day i usually give the b complex either at lunchtime or with the um, like with a snack before like mid-morning or usually it's lunchtime or mid-morning why because that's when usually people start to crash and what the b complex does it kind of like gives them a steady release of energy throughout the day so they don't go <laughs> do you know what i mean uh right so and blue light blockers yes kate blue light blockers so a lot of people ask me, and I do wear glasses, but these are blue light blockers, right? Now, the thing, and I have uh, Ni Tao, who is an optician. She's uh, taking part here. And she um, actually told me that it hasn't been proven yet that the blue light blockers really work. So it really is, the key is really to um, drop or to reduce your exposure to blue light to the best of your ability, okay? But I do have them, like, it doesn't hurt, right? So I do use them, but I still follow the rule 30 to 60 minutes before bedtime and 30 and like 30 minutes at least after I wake up, no technology. And I've had people like, so what do I do? It's like, go be with your wife, you know, go get, you know, track shit with your wife or go play with your kids, go do like, you know, story time. like there's so much that we can do uh, in that last hour of the day that doesn't have to um, involve technology. We just became unfazed and, you know, we've, we've lost cre creativity and with, with what with the things that we can do. Uh, right, I have another one. Victoria, oh, it was Victoria, Blue Light Rockers. Yes, Victoria. The glasses, yep. Yeah. Uh, Kurva, I'm never looking at a string again. <laughs> yeah, then. Uh, right, organic products. I couldn't agree more about quality of it, but how to bring quality if you're on a tight budget? Uh, yeah, look, the, and this is reality. Uh, what I would say, choose organic where you can and make smart substitutions. If you can't, cannot afford organic chicken, which you're right, is ridiculously expensive, then maybe reduce the chicken consumption and increase your cold water fish, increase your organic egg consumption, um, in a way to kind of like, you're still choosing high quality, but the, the, the ones that are more affordable. Other things that I kind of like try and think, like the fruit and vegetable that I eat skin, with the skin on, I favor it if I have to choose to buy organic because they get obviously even more exposure to pesticides and uh, antibiotics, right? I know a lot comes from the, the soil. If you're about to say something, yes, I know that, but... Um, at least it's a way to kind of like offset it a little bit. Um, and another thing, quantity. We don't need to eat as much as we think we do. And that is something that I think people struggle to grasp. 
because they, especially the ones that enjoy the training, they're so uh, kind of used to eating a certain amount every two to three hours. And I get that. And I'm not saying, you know, fasting is the way to go. It's not something that I personally do. And I only do that with clients on clinical cases or athletes at the last stages of a competition preparation. Uh, but it's in terms of like quantities of food, I think we as, as a nation or as a population, we eat too much. So maybe um, consider or revisit the amounts, like how much food you're eating. I think that was a big change for me. And it was a way that I found to feel satiated and not have to um, cut food, like cut meals, like cut foods, like some food groups out completely. Um, and really focus on like get, getting all the, like more vegetables and more fruit in your diet. Like obviously fruit, you have to be careful with, especially like anyone that suffers from diabetes because of the high sugar content. But yeah, you don't need that big a portion, especially when it comes to protein, too much protein. And I've said before, a lot of people are like, do you eat a lot of protein? No, and I don't give a lot of protein to my clients. Um, just enough to balance, th balance things out. Too much protein can become toxic. Variety of food, what can you do? Like if you have a sp specific goal in mind, like lose fat, for example. If you have, if you if you have a specific goal, like losing fat, for example, even more so, you need variety. Because what happens with people, like with um, our the foods that we eat, and this is what it's so important um, for you to understand, is that if Every everything we suppress, especially for for a long period of time, comes back in unhealthy ways, and that's where the binge eating and that need for a cheat meal, which I, well, I hate. <laughs> uh, that even the concept of it um, starts, and our relationship with foods. If we focus on getting loads of like high quality foods in us you know we you won't feel the need to go and look for more food we cheat and that's that's for relationships too we cheat when our, our needs are not being met so we cheat on our diets when our when our nutritional needs are not being met so even more so my clients are losing fat and i lose fat when i have variety and by variety i don't mean adding ice cream or adding um you know cakes or and some of them do have cakes i have their recipes uh but it's get uh, you know within the you know good fats protein good carbohydrates vegetables yeah you can choose uh you can have like so much variety and one thing that i want to like in terms of like um what's detrimental to your health guys sugar right so there was a study showing they were talking about how addictive sugar is processed sugar is and they got like so they had two study groups one of them had um mice they had mice exposed to free quantities of sugar and free quantities of cocaine 96 percent of the time the mice chose sugar now what's more alarming even more alarming is that um the second study group they had mice that were already addicted to cocaine exposed to free amounts of cocaine and free amounts of sugar and guess what they still chose sugar so this is how and obviously when it comes to studies done on on, with addiction i'm just gonna um, i'm just rechecking the connection so obviously 
when it comes to studies done on it, like on addiction, we can't use human beings due to the health implications of it. So the, the, the physiological next best thing or the closest thing to humans are uh, mice, lab mice. So yeah, very, very scary. Now, what's even more interesting, when they looked at the glycemic index of um, gluten, right? So gluten found in flour, you know, the breads that we eat. Yeah. When they looked at gluten versus um, sugar, gluten actually had a higher glycemic index compared to table sugar. So what that means is that it actually raises your blood sugar faster than table sugar. Why? Well, very high processed. It's, it's highly processed, and because of that, it's really quickly absorbed by the by your body, by, by your bloodstream. So be careful with gluten, be careful with uh, bread, pasta, your cakes. Now, you might ask, but oh, you know, I've I've worked with you, you and you you gave me bread because I know that there's not a chance people will stop eating bread, will stop eating gluten, or they'll stop eating sugar. So the worst thing as a nutritional coach I can do for my clients is to deprive them altogether of it because that's when food sensitivities happen. Food sensitivities are nothing else than your body reacting to what is it, to what is pre present in your blood. And you won't have a food sensitivity to something that you're not consuming. So if you are deprived of like, let's say you're having a diet of like the chicken, brown rice and broccoli, and that's all you eat, start eating nuts and tomatoes and to see what happens to your skin. I guarantee you're going to have a reaction or to see what happens to your stomach. I guarantee you're going to have, have a reaction. So knowing that people will inevitably have those food elements sooner or later, I will give them little bits here and there as to prevent food intolerances, food sensitivities and bad reactions to happen. Um, so, yes, if you like variety of food, especially if you're trying to lose fat, again, I can take it up with you later on on a one on one. Um, what about alcohol? Right. OK, look, you know me. I love my glass of red wine, but alcohol is not good, okay? It stops a series of processes. It affects hormone. It affects estrogen production in your body, you know, especially women, but in, in, in our bodies in general. Um, and it has very little, well, it has extremely poor uh, nutritional content. So that's what we, when we say, oh, you know, alcohol is empty calories, it really is. And the, the interesting thing um, about alcohol is that it actually impairs our ability. So again, if you drink, if you're going to go out and you're going to drink, make sure you're drinking water, make sure you're flushing it out um, because it actually affects production again of melatonin. And the thing with melatonin, sorry, I'm just, uh, and the thing with melatonin is that you, it's it's the hormone that helps us fixate new learnings and that helps us um, remember things. So when we drink and we or when we go on a binge and we have a little too much and you go and you, your memory is all a bit hazy and you're like, oh, I can't remember what happened. It's actually it's not the whole, the alcohol as such, but it's your um, production of melatonin that didn't happen in the sleep after you drank, that didn't allow you to fixate the memories of what happened whilst you were drinking. So um, all in all, alcohol does not help us. Having said that, <laughs> red wine, because it's made with red grapes, is rich in polyphenols, but I would not advise anyone to go and drink alcohol, but uh, to go and drink wine just every day just because of that. But what I would say, if you want to drink alcohol, especially like wine is the, you know, the least of evils, but um, 
have, make sure you have plenty of water and you really flush it down and you dilute it. Uh, oh, thank you. Uh, da, 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 da. Probiotic. So <laughs> probiotic recommendations in food form, things like if you're in yogurt. Yes, you can. Now, what you have to be aware of, and thank you. Great question, actually, Marianne, is that dairy is not great for, especially if you have like chronic chronic diseases already going on because what dairy and actually eggs as well um but i would not stop eating eggs like um, i would only actually cut it out completely same with dairy um i rotate right and with my clients as well rotate it in and out is um that it actually encourages the um reproduction of some bad bacteria so i would say yes but you're still better off supplementing with probiotic if that is um, if is the main goal. To be honest, I would not have yoga every day or kefir every day just to make up my probiotic content. Okay. Um, but great question. Does times we eat during the day affect of affect the foods on the microbiome? Like, awesome question. Um, the reason why, yes, and the reason for that is because the, the body absorbs different different food types at different times of the day differently. Um, so you have probably eaten some types of foods and you like later in the evening and you felt like indigestion. And so, yes, 100%. Um, Again, it depends on quantity. It depends on uh, what foods you're eating and how you're combining them. So how you combine food elements in one meal, that is like crucial for digestion. So definitely uh, be aware of that. I can take it up with you, Marianne, later on as well, if you have like a more specific, uh, more specific question in regards to that. Yeah, 100 percent to us. Guys, keep, keep them coming. Any more questions? Collagen powder. <laughs> oh, interesting one. Um, actually, you know what? I used to take collagen um, maybe a year, year and a half ago. Uh, the thing with collagen, like, I, I'd be interested to say what for, like, to know what for. Um, Victoria, if you can just kind of like explain why collagen, because obviously for the for the reasons that we we normally take in terms of like tissue uh, recomposition and repair, yes, one hundred percent. Just make sure that you just make sure, yeah, you take for your skin. Yeah, I, I used to as well. And just make sure if you are taking collagen that you are taking vitamin C. Collagen does not get absorbed without vitamin C. Okay, so make sure that you're supplementing with that. Otherwise, it's just expensive urine. Uh, yay, I do that. <laughs> Good, Paula. Um, the things I eat most are organic qual quality over quantity. <clears throat> Rahil, amazing. That's it. I mean, And I know, guys, I, I get it. It's so hard to eat organic all the time. And to be honest, like most of the restaurants we go to, they don't have organic food uh, unless they clearly um, advise it. But it's um, it, it, it's really important. Like they literally bathe the foods that like the non-organic foods with pesticides, uh, glycophag. Um, oh God, like all like the antibiotics and it's it's just not worth it it's one of those like in the short term i get it it's hard to to budget for organic foods um but in the long run it has such a detrimental effect to our health it's it's not a joke and it will hurt your gut lining and remember what i said 70 percent of our immune system is along our gut lining and our gut lining has the the surface area of a tennis ball it's massive and there's actually like you know some scientists they actually talk about the humans as starting from the gut so starting from the microbiome from the bacteria and then 
developing from that. Uh, oh, hold on, hold on. One more question, two seconds. Oops. Right, so Rebecca Cox was talking about it. He was saying that collagen is no longer present in the meat we consume as all the cartilage and parts of the animal containing collagen are removed. Yeah, that historically we used to consume high collagen. Yeah, in, in earlier civilizations, uh, when we used to consume the whole animal, <laughs> whereas parts of the animal contain containing collagen. And I remember, I know this is going to be absolutely gross, but I remember um, to some of you, um, like we we used to suck on the on the bones, like um, that sounds bad, I know, but it used to like on the uh, beef bones. And I remember whilst my grandma was cooking, like, um, yeah, it, it's just not how things are done anymore, I suppose. But uh, a shrimp. <laughs> Hold on, I'm catching up with you. Actually, I'm not sure about cartilage, but all the parts containing collagen, yes. Um, well, a high percentage of collagen that we get from an uh, animal uh, products are uh, in the cartilage. So yeah, it makes sense. And in the in the bone marrow. Hold on. Da -da 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 -da. Are there better breads pasteurized to go for with lower glycemic index? Yes, great questions. Yes. Uh, barley, rye, great options, and anything. So most of the gluten that we consume are wheat, right? So, um, and I think that I saw some studies by the American Journal of Nutrition saying that we consume about 135 pounds of gluten uh, a year, which is like a pharmacological uh, quantity. So, um, Yes, right, barley, all good. I've, I've seen like gluten-free spinach pasta as well, even black bean pasta. But, mm, I, I would say, yeah, the bread, like rye, rye and barley, 100%. We are really spoiled for choice as well because we have... Uh, uh, the organic food is one big bullish. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm going to comment on that uh, in a minute. So, yeah, we, we're really spoiled for choice because we have access to all these alter food alternatives, right? Like a few years ago, not too long, we didn't have any of that. So, we like, there's so many ways to work around things. Right. This is amazing, but kids are hungry. <laughs> I'll text you my question later. Okay, no problem. Um, I've sucked on meatballs too. <laughs> uh, also, love to open up the bone and eat the marrow. I know, like Victoria. Our parents, like, hey, they're onto something. Uh, so do you think supplementing with organic, uh, so do you think it's worth supplementing with organic collagen powder? Yes. It's not cheap, though, to, good, to get good uh, collagen powder. Um, so I would say uh, if you can afford it, yes. Uh, make sure that you add the, the vitamin C, I would say, like, between two and three thousand uh, milligrams of vitamin C to make sure that that gets absorbed well and you're not wasting money through your urine. Um, but yeah, 100 percent. Is it one of the essentials for your immune system? No. But if you if you like training and if you can afford it, well, like, why not? It's a great it's a, it is a great supplement. And no, we don't get enough in our foods. Um, Right, so someone on Instagram said uh, organic food is one big bullish. I think it's bullshit. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna go pee on this um, on this one. So the the one worrying thing, and I and I get why you're saying this, is the FDA has um, there's a minimum that the foods have to meet in terms of like a minimum requirement that, that organic foods have to meet uh, in terms of being pesticide and antibiotic like etc free to be able to be considered organic. Um, now we have no control over that right 
we can only do our best. We still be exposed to a lot less if you chose uh, foods from sources that were not even, that didn't even meet that minimum criteria. So I get why you're saying that, but I think, look, we have to do what we can within our capabilities. And if you can't like, you know, grow your own vegetables and grow it and if you if you don't have your own uh, crops and your your cattle we have to at least start considering the benefits of trying to to use organic food but yeah i know i know like it's 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 reality and it's a reality that is part of the food industry unfortunately but i think it's like let's do the best we can with what we have and if we can at least reduce our exposure to toxins, then, and if going organic is the way to do that, even if we still have a few, like if you still, if it's still there's some level of exposure to, uh, to toxins, then, um, then at least we know we're doing our part. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you. But that's great. Like I like being, I like being challenged when it makes sense. And I, I have mentioned that before. Guys, any more questions? No? All right, cool. Um, I hope you all enjoyed it. If you if you enjoyed this webinar, can you just type yes in the question in a question mark? How to retain muscle mass without gym. What was that? Hold on. Oh, hold on. More questions are coming. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Amazing. How to retrain muscle mass without gym. Victoria, we're going to talk about it later on. Um, but as I said before, let's not get complacent. Let's get creative. How to keep muscle mass only with body weight. Okay. I'm going to start posting some stuff for you guys so that we can all do our best to keep, keep our muscles. But I can do another one, like a separate one on keeping muscle mass. Focus on eat on your nutrition 100%. Don't, don't get into that mindset of like, oh, I can't train. So why should I bother with eating right? Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Good. Awesome guys. So what I'm going to, yay. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Oh, that's really good. Guys, I am so glad you've all enjoyed it. What I'm going to say, if you, um, all of you that, that type yes. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to send you a private note and we are going to book our 30 minute one on one supplement diet review. If you can, if you want to ask me any questions of what you can do or like some of the questions, like where can I take this and that? This is your time to do that. Thank you. It was awesome. I hope you're all having a great Sunday and that this was somewhat informative. Bye.